who wants to listen to your conversation for whatever reason. We've seen guys at the NSA, you know, you know, tracking down their girlfriends, boyfriends, trying to see what their activities are. And it's no different when you have this technology in your car at any time somebody could uh, uh, type in and listen to what you have to say. And in other news, it just wouldn't be a complete show without a epic tale of home defense. And now we see homeowner shoots and kills home invaders after they beat him and pistol whip his mother. When I opened the door, these two guys stormed in with guns and started pistol whipping me and took me to the ground. Started pistol whipping and kicking her in the sides. He put a gun to my head and I just started fighting back. Or I feel like if I hadn't had the gun in there, this whole news story would be about me and my mother being dead in this house. They put me in a situation and I only reacted to it. I had to protect my family, you know? And that was news out of Georgia. And we see more and more of these things every day. Uh, it, it seems like every day there's another article, another video about somebody taking their personal responsibility, their personal safety into their own hands. And many police chiefs, many sheriffs around the nation are getting on board with this because as much as you see the politicians and the talking heads talking about nobody wants the guns and everybody wants to ban the guns, and nobody wants more than five bullets in their gun and all this other stuff. Real people who live in the real world realize that there are bad people out there. And even the cops say, hey, we can't protect you all the time, so do what you have to do to protect yourself. And one of the ways you can protect yourself is having good water to drink, but that's not so available in certain parts of the country, like in this Florida article, vandals drain 400,000 gallons from Flagler water system. Detectives said the vandals opened about 20 valves at the Plantation Bay water system sometime on Sunday and left them running. Authorities said the incident likely occurred between 3.30 and 10 p.m. So you have to be careful about this. And this is just another water story. We've heard about the drought out in California and also about the lead poisoning in Flint, Michigan. And we're actually sending our crew up there to investigate it. So you can look forward to more reports from Leanne McAdoo on the topic. Now stay tuned after this break. We'll be back with more special reports. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. Did you know that only six corporations control 90% of what millions of Americans see, hear, and read every single day? It's the illusion of choice. Think about it. The mainstream media is owned by only a handful of mega corporations with vested interests. But on the other hand, the internet is an interconnected network of billions of sources. So you can research information for yourself from multiple sources, or you can blindly accept what you hear or read in the mainstream media, never questioning what you are being told. This gives you a false sense of reality. I mean, do you actually know what you think you know? Or have you been programmed to accept someone else's version of events? Think about it. This is Darren McBreen, and I want you to break the matrix at InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well. And he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to give my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which I've never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity. 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here lately, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes. And now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things. And if it has those kind of effects for me, I know that it will do great things for you. So just try Super Male Vitality. I promise you, you'll love it. And finally, let's look at Anthony Gucciardi, Infowars.com reporter. He also works with Dr. Group and others helping develop the newest, most cutting edge, high quality supplements. Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle and Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. The meeting to terminate the American middle class is underway atop a mountain of greed located in the highest town in the Alps, Davos, Switzerland. From January 20th to January 23rd, the invitation-only annual globalist event of 2,500 attendees includes 40 heads of state, a smattering of celebrities, and 14 Nobel laureates. The average ticket to the male-dominated assemblage costs $27,000 to attend. Reuters reports anti-poverty charity Oxfam announced that just 62 people, 53 of them men, own as much wealth as the poorest half of the entire world population, and the richest 1% of those own more than the other 99% put together. The wealth gap is widening faster than anyone anticipated, with the 1% overtaking the rest one year earlier than Oxfam had predicted only a year ago. Among the key figures in Davos will be U.S. Vice President Joe Biden, Secretary of State John Kerry, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and the foreign ministers of both Iran and Saudi Arabia. As the global economy slows, populism grows, and the daily possibility of a derivative inflated bubble bursting has world leaders and their mega corporate banking counterparts racing to close the diminishing gap on the American middle class as a hasty bid to reduce the United States to a third world nation dominated by surveillance technology. Saidichi Innovation CEO Rob Leslie, an agenda contributor for the 2016 World Economic Annual Meeting in Davos, says the availability and resolution of imaging from satellites, drones, self-driving cars, and more will continue to increase exponentially. This will drive the creation of ever more sophisticated analysis algorithms, products, and companies basically trapping the American population like rats in a cage. Among the 250 closed-door meetings and elbow-rubbing parties will be discussions about the status of job-stealing robots, the current invasion of Europe and the United States by the engineered migration crisis, the shocking populism of Donald Trump, bragging of hidden redoubts, and a growing interest in fleeing Earth altogether for Mars as the Gini coefficient an indicator of the level of inequality Americans now live under is now higher than the Philippines and Vietnam. 
Family debt levels continue to increase. The middle class has shrunken by over 11% since 1971, while President Obama and others continue to lie about job growth, which has stayed relatively flat in comparison to the skyrocketing corporate profit growth. So it would only make sense that the richer the very few get, the more paranoid they become. Basically, we're destabilizing the world. We're creating massive amounts of fear. Um, and we're spending all of our money on surveillance and control. And I have a, a slide from Medard Gabel on how much we spend on war and how if we spent a third of that on peace, we could give every single uh, person on the planet a, a two-story cinder block home with running water, electricity, and even a swimming pool. Um, the injustice that is being perpetuated right now, we now know that 62 people on the planet have as much wealth as the lower three billion. Um, this is insane. Concentration of wealth, and I have my, you've showed it on your show before, my preconditions of revolution chart. The preconditions of revolution all exist in the United States of America today. We are like a house that has been soaked in gasoline with ammunition put in every room, and we're just waiting for the first match to blow by. John Bound for Infowars.com. President Obama has declared a federal emergency for Flint, Michigan, after a devastating man-made disaster was created by the state, leaving hundreds of thousands of residents there with contaminated drinking water. Now, all of this happened about two years ago when the city decided to switch the water supply from Detroit to the Flint River, which is a tributary that runs through the town and it's notorious to its residents for its filth. Now, immediately following this switch, the residents were complaining about the taste, the odor, the appearance of the water, but state officials kept reassuring them the water was completely safe to drink and that there was nothing to worry about. But now we know that that was a dangerous lie. Researchers from Virginia Tech found that the water coming from the Flint River was 19 times more corrosive than the water coming from Detroit, but they weren't treating it with an anti-corrosive agent. More than half of the homes have pipelines made of lead, which means this corrosive water was now leaching the lead out of the pipes and it was going into these people's homes for more than 18 months. A little segue here, this anti-corrosive agent would have cost the city about $100 a day. But instead, I guess they were able to find countless dollars to fluoridate the people's water. So to them, allegedly stopping cavities is more important than stopping brain damage. So 18 months later, in the fall of last year, researchers discovered that the amount of children with above average lead levels in their blood had doubled. Now there is no safe level of lead in blood, but lead poisoning causes brain damage um, and other neurological health issues. And it's particularly damaging to developing children as well as fetuses. Now, the city said this, that they switched the water back to Detroit in October, but it was too late. The damage was already done, and there is no telling how long these pipes are going to continue to leak lead. Now, the Washington Post does a really good job at breaking down visually just how high above normal Flint's lead levels really were. So the EPA considers five parts per billion to be safe. But 90% of the homes in Flint were reporting 27 parts per billion. 10% of the homes in the sample had lead levels much higher than this. The highest reading registered 13,000 parts per billion. The EPA considers water to be toxic waste level at 5,000 parts per billion. So parents haven't even really seen the long-term effects of what this lead poisoning is going to be doing to them, all because a state-appointed manager wanted to save money. They lied to residents for two years, told them the drinking water was completely safe, all they needed to do was just boil the water, and of course now these kids who have been poisoned are going to have to be supported for decades. And this researcher, she's a Flint area pediatrician, Dr. Mona. Hannah Atisha and she was actually studying the lead levels in some of Flint's children and she was the one who actually forced the state to acknowledge this lead problem. The city tried to discredit her research taking water samples of their own saying everything was completely fine uh, but of course she was able to prove that that wasn't true and now she's saying that all of the city's children under six should be treated as exposed. So that's almost 7,000 children there who are being affected by this. Now Michael Moore 
of course. He's there in Flint. He's calling it a crime scene. He's accusing government leaders of intentionally poisoning thousands of people. And he is pinning the government's decision, of course, on race.